Crypto has serious deficiencies when it comes to corporate governance. That is the opinion of Carolyn Wilkins, who is a member of the Bank of England's Financial Policy Committee. This was expressed in an article written by City AM on the 19th of October. So quite a damning statement. And on screen now, you can see the actual article here, Crypto Serious Deficiencies in Governance. Carolyn Wilkins also goes on to say, the industry risk being overtaken by traditional finance players rolling out blockchain technologies and said the sector should learn from the governance of regulated finance firms to recover faith from investors. She uses the word faith, she uses the word trust, the crypto ecosystem, and that's really what governance is about. The governance structure, governance framework, effective implementation of good corporate governance is all about ensuring trust and faith in whatever it is a company, business, or industry does. Now, her comments here where it says the industry risk being overtaken by traditional finance players rolling out blockchain technologies, it seems to suggest to me she's a bit of an advocate of blockchain technology itself. There's no issue with the technology and it seems to have a very, very bright future, certainly here in the UK and across the world. It's just perhaps the way uh, existing crypto businesses are going about their business, about leveraging and using blockchain technology in order to advance the economy and mentioning that, you know, sector should learn from governance of regulated finance firms. Also then uh, she goes on to say, you know, trust has been evaporated. Sounding out here, the spark in the collapse of a number of high profile firms, including Celsius Network and Voyager. So there's a link there. There's a suggestion that Celsius Network, Voyager, maybe Three Arrows Capital, a lot of these high profile casualties in 2022 happen to go under and go into bankruptcy or maybe be wholly because of their corporate governance or should we say lack of it and then furthermore Wilkins said that poor governance in the industry had proliferated and threatened to block crypto's progress into mainstream finance there are a number of serious deficiencies in governance in the crypto ecosystem that need more attention than they are getting today and then finally claiming that traditional finance isn't perfect absolutely right but what's at stake for crypto and DeFi decentralized finance is the ability to make meaningful inroads into providing services to households and businesses in the real economy Economy. And for me, essentially, that is the key. If we're going to go to the next level when it comes to crypto, in particular DeFi activities, when we're talking about you know getting your mortgage on the blockchain, when it's uh, insurance products on the blockchain, whether it's other traditional finance products that we get as everyday products, um, you know, it's part of our everyday lives in our households, then the key here is really there's got to be enough trust and faith by us, the general public, in this technology and also in the custodians and the stewards of this technology who are providing these particular services. And at the moment, it's suggesting that isn't the case. And obviously some of the calamities of 2022, some of the high profile collapses of crypto-based businesses is suggesting otherwise too. So what is corporate governance or governance and how can some of these crypto businesses, industries or companies really get their house in order? So corporate governance, governance shall I say, can be said to be best practices best practices with regards to the actions and the behaviors of senior members of a company, normally the board of directors, uh, those with power, decision makers, C-suite executives. So it's in down to the managers or management level then to make sure it filters down to the rest of the organization. The key is that everyone needs to be acting in the best interests of the stakeholders. That includes customers, that includes clients, the shareholders, suppliers, just as, as a few example, as opposed to acting in the best, best interests of perhaps individuals or themselves. And this is known as the agency theory. So this theory actually suggests there are two key players and they are the, the owners uh, or shareholders. And then there's the agents who are managers and directors, those who are entrusted, empowered to run the business on behalf of the owners. And it's suggesting agents can act in their own interests over and above the interests of the, the stakeholders, i.e. the shareholders and the company as a whole. And what effective corporate governance really is about, it's a principles-based system first and foremost, although there is a rules-based part of it as well, a legislative-based approach. But the principles really are about regulating this or regulating governance as so agents act in the best interests of the company, of the principles, as opposed to their own personal interests. And another high profile casualty, and this isn't in the crypto industry, this was in another industry back in 2018, Carillion, you've probably heard of those, they were a government contractor. And I'm gonna bring up a quote 
that was written in The Guardian back in 2018. And this is The Guardian. Back in May, a separate parliamentary report blamed recklessness, hubris and greed for Carillion's failure and also criticised auditors for not spotting its problem. But what effect are some of perhaps the benefits of good, robust corporate governance, governance controls and a good framework and also the execution? Well, first and foremost is stability. It's stability in that company, having that stable ship. If you think about Celsius Network, Voyager, Three Arrows Capital, uh, very, very short lived in that respect, uh, a very choppy boat. And in the end, obviously, they all went down. A lot of employees, unfortunately, don't know what corporate governance really is all about, what it looks like, and really entrust you know, their faith in the stewardship of seniority, of directors, of the C-suite executives. And that obviously comes home to roost if you know there has been poor corporate governance and all of a sudden everything unravels uh, and just collapses like it did with these particular uh, examples. And also we're talking about external factors, the environment, social ESG. We're talking about external investors as well, how it looks to external investors. When you've got a good, robust corporate governance structure, then it's very attractive. It's attractive on a macro level. And of course, shareholders as well, and the principals, owners of the business, they will feel protected with a good corporate governance framework structure and obviously execution of that and also the directors and agents. For them, it's a lot easier and a lot more robust for them to implement strategy when there is a good corporate governance framework. And this is where in traditional finance, and Carolyn Wilkins makes that comment in the article, in traditional finance, they've had deep rooted years of experience. They've seen so many different scenarios that actually this is still quite new in crypto and therefore quite a risk if crypto businesses don't get their house in order. And if you're wondering what good corporate governance actually looks like, then you don't need to look any further. This was published in July 2018 and actually followed on from the Cadbury report back in 1992. Some of you may have remembered that as a result of the whole scandal by Robert Maxwell. So Robert Maxwell, that was a huge scandal which prompted this. And this is issued by the Financial Reporting Council. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail because you can actually easily download this report yourself. But really, what the corporate governance code is all about is five key areas. That is board leadership and company purpose, divisional responsibilities, composition, succession, evaluation, audit risk and internal control, and remuneration. These are the five key pillars uh, that underpin all of this. So in conclusion, the real message here from Carolyn Wilkins is that native crypto businesses really, really need to think about these principles within their crypto businesses, whether it's exchanges, whether it's um, NFT exchanges, whatever it may be to do with blockchain and crypto. Otherwise, the traditional finance guys will come along who have got far more sort of deep rooted experience and they've got more robust governance structures that are tried and tested, you know, withstood the, the time or the, the, the test of time, shall we say, and make come and sort of push these native crypto guys aside and take, you know, take that cake if you like. So really that is the key message here. Um, I hope this video has been useful for you as always. Um, please give us a like, subscribe, bell notification icon. And until I see you on the next video, keep well.